<laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with us. My name is Tweet Coleman, and I'm one of the hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. We're live and in the clear here this afternoon here at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy in the Aerospace Center of Sun and Fun, a beautiful center of excellence here in Lakeland, Florida. I'm sure everybody's heard of Lakeland, Florida, the big air show. In fact, this is the 49th year for the air show. So 49 wonderful years. Think about it. how many events really come to that great number of 49. Very few. So we're just delighted to be here. And this afternoon I have with me, it's Major, isn't it? Well, so I was a Major in the Air Force, but now I usually just go by John or, yeah. or Rain occasionally. You know, it just depends on who the group is, but yes. Yep, there's a Major John Rain Waters, and I can see where the rain comes in. Yeah. <laughs> a little play on the name there. Again, there might be an acronym that goes along with that, but that's for another day, another story. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's part two, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the extra stuff. That's the extra content. <laughs> Good. Thanks for being with us. And uh, you flew F-16s in the Air Force? I did. I was actually a first assignment instructor pilot, so I was teaching guys and girls right after they went or right as they were going through primary training, and then I eventually moved on to the F-16, where I was fortunate to fly the F-16 for about seven years, oh, both in wow. a combat squadron, and then I was really lucky to be a demo pilot, so I got to fly in the Sun and Fun show three years in a row. So that's where Sun and Fun is near and dear to my heart and it has the, the hook in me because I love, I love this show. Wow, how is it flying the F-16? Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work that goes into it. It's, it's single pilot. It's single pilot, so it's the way I love to fly. Now, as we were talking before we went on, it's a little bit different now. I might have three people in the cockpit with me flying the 777, but the F-16, you strap that jet on. And the ability, when you climb straight up and you're actually accelerating, going in the vertical, it's really, I don't know if anything else can match that feeling. So flying the F-16, hands down, I mean, it's my favorite plane. It'll probably always be my favorite plane. Then a P-51 right underneath that, but it is a lot of fun to fly. Well, what altitudes do you usually fly the F-16? It depends on the type of the mission. So if you're talking in combat, depending on what the threat environment might be, there is a time period where we're doing low strike. So you ingress at 500 feet. You would pop up a few miles before your target. And this is kind of thinking, you know, Desert Storm 1 days. To now with precision guided weapons, if you're going into combat, you're typically flying somewhere around the high teens to mid 20s. Part of that is one, like you don't need to be down low if it's an uncontested environment. We're not worried about, you know, shoulder fire missiles and things like that, or it gets us out of that range. But now you're giving the weapons better kinematics. So if I can give the bomb, if I can be going Mach, you know, 0.95 at 20,000 feet, that's wow. just that much wow. potential energy I'm giving the bomb when I'm releasing it from my jet. And again, that's kind of the surface level. There's a lot that goes into it, yeah. uh, but it, it varies. So anything from right on the deck to, uh, up to 50,000 feet. So, wow. What was your favorite? I, I know we're going to talk about other things, but what was your favorite on the F-16? <laughs> it's really tough. Going to combat and doing what I joined to do, right? I, I would remember 9-11 vividly. I was a junior in high school, and that was a pivotal moment for me. I actually had my first flight in the Cessna on September 10th, 2001. Wow. So then the next day, obviously, that was a, a significant event that changed a lot of lives. So I really wanted to be able to serve my country. I really solidified that. And I obviously had a passion for aviation. Being able to go out there and serve my country and fly was hitting a grand slam. Going out there and flying combat sorties, for me, that was something that was really important at the time to be able to go out there, protect the guys and gals on the ground, hopefully get back uh, you know, for the people that attacked our country. So for me, that was really rewarding. To the flip side, you know, at the end of my active duty career, I was a demo pilot, so I'm going out doing loops to music. But being out, interfacing with young people, uh, seeing their reaction to the demo, getting them excited about aviation, because I had a lot of people who helped me along the way. Being able to give back, hopefully in a positive way, and inspire the next generation to go out there, join and serve, or just pursue a career in aviation, whether it's turning wrenches on planes, or going out there and ripping around at you know, Mach 1 slinging missiles. 
uh, that to me was very rewarding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slinging yeah. missiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so slightly different, yeah. Where did you grow up? I actually grew up just south of Atlanta, Peachtree okay. City. And you know, I've talked about this in other, in other forums. I was very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of aviation. So that's a Delta hub. There are a lot of oh, ex Air yeah. Force and Navy individuals. My family had no ties to aviation whatsoever. But my dad kind of saw aviation as something that I might be interested in. So I had those boundaries and kind of some guidance, uh, you know, the formative years, teenage years to kind of help me and kind of say, hey, you know what, this might be something that I would like to go do. And then I had a lot of resources to ask questions and how did you do it? What do you recommend? So I was very fortunate and blessed to grow up in an environment uh, that kind of pushed me along that path. Who knows what I would be doing if I didn't grow up there? Maybe a lawyer, doctor, or I, I mean, who, know, who knows? <laughs> well, you seem Probably to have that energy, though, for a pilot and the confidence and the it, innate. It's it's fun. And, yeah. it, you know, you can relate to this, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it takes, you obviously have to have a passion about it because yeah. it's not an easy thing to do. And things can go sideways quickly. And you're dealing with a very dynamic situation with a lot of variables. I like the challenge. The last combat mission set that I really trained to was suppression of enemy air defenses. So the F-16 is the jack of all trades, master of none. My last unit, suppression of enemy air defenses was our main mission set, which is the wild weasel mission that hails out of Vietnam. It's very complex, it's very challenging. There's a lot that goes into it, but every now and then you have one of those sorties, you know, I probably can count five on my hand, right? Where everything is going right, and uh -huh. you as a team with seven other pilots are firing on all cylinders and you're going out there and you're doing everything that needs to get done to get the mission done. And to me, that's really rewarding having that very challenging and dynamic environment and going out there and winning. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always happen that way. You know, there's a lot, usually a lot of debriefs and things like that that go along with it. But uh, every now and then, you know, you knock it out of the park and it, it is very rewarding to have all that culminate come all together. Right. What about the F-35? So, uh so I think, you know, the F-35, we can talk a lot about the F-35. I've never flown the F-35. I have a lot of friends who fly the F-35. I have done some exercises early on in the F-35 days. And the F-35 got a lot of bad press early on. And I think they're comparing apples and oranges. People say, hey, it can't replace the A-10. Absolutely. It, the F-35 will never be as good at doing close air support like the A-10. However, when you go out there and we talk about near peer threats, which is really what we're focusing on, you know, we have China and we have Russia, things mm -hmm. we haven't really talked about for the last 20, 25 years. We've been focused on uncontested environments in Afghanistan. The F-35 takes us to the place that we need to be to go out there and match near peer adversaries. And having flown with F-35s in formation, the amount of situational awareness they bring to a fourth generation fighter, such as an F-16, it amplifies your lethality mm -hmm. tenfold. Mm -hmm. So the F-35 is impressive to see when it does the things it is designed to do, mm -hmm. um, which you really, we can't really talk about here or showcase out to the public, but I'm a believer in the, in the F-35. It obviously has some things that aren't ideal and great, but like anything, uh, you're, you're gonna have those kinks. It is the, the platform, I think, that takes us and prepares us for the next fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. I, I saw a couple of them out there. Yeah, they're big. Yesterday, they're, yeah. they're big. They're loud. Um, is that a single co uh, cockpit? I mean, cockpit is. is huge. It is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I come from the Viper, which is a small cockpit. Uh, it's amazing. There are people who are much larger than me that fit in it because I felt like I had no room. Um, it, it's designed. I think there's multitudes of reasons why you see that. Employing the plane, I think flying fighters, like flying an F-16, I think is inherently easy. Mm -hmm. Now there are definitely challenges that come with it and can bite you and, and hurt you very quickly, but employing the F-16, employing the F-35, employing the weapons, managing the tactics, managing the threat that's out there, that's the complex part. That's where making the plane as easy as possible to fly is crucial so that the pilot can employ the weapons. There, there are pluses and minuses to having you know, two people in a plane, having a weapon system officer in the back seat. There's some crew coordination, like when they're firing on all cylinders, they're usually crushing it. But now that requires two people, you know, it's double the support, double the footprint in country, double the people that you have to get rescued if someone gets shot down. Oh, yeah. uh, so having you know, one cockpit with one person managing the fight, you remove some of those variables from it. So if you can make the plane manageable for one pilot, by giving them sensors. And I say, you know, if you compare an F-35 or F-22 radar to an F-16 radar, and I flew with 
the best F-16 radar that we have in the U.S. inventory for F-16s, you're working really hard to figure out what the threat picture is, what it looks like out there, versus an F-22 or an F-35. They get the God's eye view, they can see everything, and they're not having to spend all these extra brain bites figuring out what is the threat lay down there. Mm. How am I managing the tactics? Am I sorted to the correct enemy aircraft? Am I shooting the correct enemy aircraft? Are you shooting the correct enemy aircraft? So there's a lot going on. It's like a Nokia phone versus mm -hmm. the iPhone. So we're, that's the way we're trending. That's where we're progressing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's exciting. So you definitely have to pull back the throttles to fly that 777, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> cra but it is crazy to see the power of the 777 ah. and those G90 motors. I mean, it is, it's wild. But it is uh, not as many Gs. Uh, we're not going supersonic. And again, you know, there's just different uh, different challenges that come with that as well. Yeah, great, great. And so you, you're also here to, today to talk about the E3? E3 Aviation Association is something I'm really proud of been working on for almost the last year, where we're bringing a lot of aviation experts from a variety of fields, from aviation photography, stole, military aviation, aerobatics. So it is a membership-based online program where we do have in-person and uh, you know, online events. We have online content, membership discounts, et cetera. Uh, just this last night, there's an E3 camping association. So people love camping. We actually have a mix of aviation enthusiasts and campers that are camping right out here at Sun and Fun. Oh, so fun. we went over last night and had a topic talk with a former Blue Angel and a former Thunderbird and weapons school instructor, which is the Air Force's uh, top gun. And so E3 Aviation Association, it's it's something that if people have some passion about aviation or some interest in aviation, whether they're just getting started or they're the retired airline pilot, there's something in there for, for you. And we want to be with them and elevate their aviation experience as they're going along their aviation journey. Again, whether you're just starting out or you, you've hung it up and you just have a passion about it still. Are you a commercial endeavor or 501c3? We are, or? We're a commercial endeavor, but a big piece of this too is partnering and really getting kids involved in aviation. Okay. So we've partnered with ACE here at Sun and Fun uh, to get youth, um, you know, uh, to, to get them additional educational content. The other piece that, you know, near and dear to my heart, F-16 World um, Guns Gear Memorial Foundation it's based out of South Carolina. It was an F-16 pilot that unfortunately passed away, but had a big passion for aviation. So the foundation was formed to help veterans in need, and the other pillar of it is to get kids involved in aviation. So a, a big facet of E3 Aviation Association is getting kids involved in aviation by bringing them educational content, exposing them to opportunities, get them flying. And so I think just the other night, we're able to complete uh, one student here who's working on our instrument check ride ensure that she's able to get all the way through her instrument training and get her instrument check ride. So being able to give back and bolster the avi aviation community and really feed the future generation is a big piece. Because I know, again, you probably can attest to this. People helped me out along the way. And I think most pilots will say something similar. And now the, I think the resources and the energy and the focus it's much more so on hey, getting young kids involved and interested in aviation. Again, whether it be returning wrenches, flying, air traffic control, because we need it. Everyone in the aviation space needs young people to be involved and interested. So that's a big pillar of us as well. Mm -hmm. Are you the president, the director? I'm the co-founder. Oh, uh, co-founder. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. And the E stands for education? So or? educate, empower, and entertain. Oh, E-E-E. So e -E. through the content, through our you know, fly-ins, et cetera, the goal, right, is to, again, entertain people with engaging content that they won't get anywhere else, empower them to go out there and pursue that next thing in aviation, whether it's a, the next certificate, the next rating, whatever it might be, uh, to go to, and then to um, you know, educate as well. So getting subject matter experts, the ones that are vetted, having that vetted content is a, is a huge piece because there is a lot of noise out there and it just seems like it's growing. So we are very selective as far as who we partner with and who we bring in. And again, it ranges from former Thunderbirds and Blue Angels, weapon school instructors, aerobatic champions, and it just spans the gamut. And I, even like, you know, aviation photography. I have my iPhone, that's about as extensive as I get <laughs> with photography, but we have some amazing photographers who from aerial photography to on the ground shooting air shows that they bring a, a level of knowledge that is just, I think, unique to this space. So a little bit of everything for, for, for those interested in aviation. So it's men and women. 
Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's a nice plan. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have two former Thunderbirds, one uh, Mace Curran. She finished her air show tour in 2019. She's a motivational speaker out there. Uh, and then Slick Baum, who finished his Thunderbird tour in the, about the 2000 time frame. So it's just a variety of people that are coming together, uh, which is really cool to me because I think aviation is a great community and that's our strength mm -hmm. in this world. Well, your timing in an F-16, I'm <laughs> sure, was paramount. <laughs> and, yeah. and so your timing to have this new organization as, as well, when we see now there's such a need in aviation, all aspects of aviation, so your timing is... We, we hope, and you know, this week we are the presenting sponsors at Sun and Fun. We have a chalet, which is open to the public before and after the show, where we're having topic talks and meet and greets. I actually just finished uh, one about... 15 minutes before I walked into here, but having some of those subject matter experts come through and just having the opportunity to meet them in person and hear what they have to say, I think is crucial. And again, it exposes. And having those things and being able to meet, I met a young lady who's gonna graduate from the U University of Florida this year. She's a job lined up to go be an engineer at Edwards Air Force Base oh. on the F-35 as a, as a test engineer, but she wants to go into the Guard or Reserve. Making those connections and talking to those people I get motivated by it and it's like hopefully that again helps her out on her journey with just one little piece of information or hopefully a lot of pieces of information you just never know where that impact might lie so mm -hmm. again I'm excited about it so uh, do the members you have an application form or how, how does it to, work you can go to e3aviationassociation.com and you okay. can register again it's a monthly or an annual fee depending on how you want to sign up the annual fee obviously gets you a discount but we have a web-based application where all our videos, podcasts, webinars, live Q and A's, those occur. But we also have an application, uh, so you can get on your iPhone or Android where you can get that. That's the online piece. But then, getting in person events like Sun and Fun, right. being able to gather, I think is really important. And a prime example. So we're doing this here at Sun and Fun, but our E3 Camping Association sister organization, they're here as well doing a camping just outside of uh, Drocken on the east side of the field. So they're able to get together, do some camping things. I'm actually staying in an RV for the first time here. So they've actually helped me out because it's a little bit of ripping the Band-Aid off when you come stay at such a large air show in an right. RV when you've right. never done it. So it's cool to have their expertise right. help me out and have this kind of blend and cross flow between the two. So uh, John, what is the annual uh, fee? So right now, while we're running at Sun and Fun, we do have a discount. It's fourteen ninety five a month for our standard membership, and our premium membership is twenty four ninety five. And then a yearly membership is discounted depending on when you join. And then after Sun and Fun, it goes up to nineteen ninety five a month, a month and, yeah. and twenty nine ninety five a month. So you get a little bit of a discount by joining during the week of Sun and Fun. Yeah, well, that's that's always a nice perk, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it is, and they get, you know, as we talk about this education and content, a big piece which we you know, I'd say we're constantly improving and working on is, you know, making sure you have value with that entertainment, that education and empowerment piece, but no kidding, some real tangible discounts, partnering with industry to get you, hey, this is actually gonna get you a discount and potentially pay for your membership. And then on top of that, you're gonna get all these extra things. So, so if somebody, uh, if they're a private pilot, could they get um, private pilot ground school through your organization? Is that part of it? We, so we are, we're actually, that's one of the things we just discussed yesterday. Uh -huh. There's a angle of attack, Chris Palmer. Um, that's one individual that we're looking to partner with. He does phenomenal um, ground school for private pilot and instrument pilot. So part, again, that's like partnering with subject matter experts like that, bringing it all into one place um, is, is our goal and that's what we're seeking to do. So mm -hmm. right now there are a lot of podcasts, there's a lot of webinars, there's a lot of breakdowns from military history to aviation, current happenings, and et cetera. The education piece we're just getting out the gate and there's a lot of great things that are coming down the pipe. So when's your conference? When's your big expo? <laughs> so we normally do one, an annual one, obviously okay. COVID. Uh, I think uh -huh. like most people put a pause on it. So our next big conference, which will have all the E3 brands, which is firearms, off-road, uh, overland, camping, aviation, will be, right now we're looking at uh, 2024 in Las Vegas. Okay. So. And so how many different categories, you named so many, do you, are you looking at? Uh, that's really, uh, that is our current E3 association brand portfolio, and kind of those different facets. And you, know, you see this blend, like 
I, I do like firearms. Camping has been kind of a new experience to me. It's kind of fun, but there's something in those for each person. But as we continue to grow, we just launched E3 Aviation Association. I think we have a few more that are in the queue. I think, I don't know if I can say it or not, but I think fishing might be the next one that's coming out. So from fly fishing to deep sea fishing, and everything in between. I can't go deep sea fishing. I'll throw up violently if I go out in the ocean. But um, yeah, so there's a lot more happening. With so you said so. you're the co-sponsor. Who's your partner there? Brian Johnson. So he actually started E3 Firearms. Uh, oh, okay. That was the first iteration of this. And he wanted to do something for his girls who were growing up and they were interested in firearms. And they're just, it was kind of as YouTube was coming about and there was a lot of things out there that was, it was just bad information or dangerous mm -hmm. information. So he had the idea and formed it. He actually found one individual who uh, is a master firearms instructor with SIG. He's an individual that, you know, the Bin Laden raid, uh, they had some special weapons made. He's part of interfacing with that team and actually took those weapons to the team as they were rolling off the assembly line so that they could go do the bin laden raid but finding someone like that wow. a subject matter yeah. expert the other person in the firearms uh, entity is uh chris tonto pronto he was portrayed in the movie 13 hours of benghazi raid so he was part of the global response force that was uh charged with protecting the cia annex in benghazi when it was overrun wow. so those are the type of people that you have in these various iterations. Yeah. <laughs> we have to wrap it up here. Yeah, yeah I, I love talking to you. Yeah. I think you talk about Mach 9.5 yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. There's a lot of information you gotta get out there. A lot there. of enthusiasm. Thank you for being with us, uh, John Rain. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and if, why don't you give that website one more time for- uh, E3AviationAssociation.com and they can find everything they need and probably a little bit more. And you'll be here all week. We are, visit us on the flight line. We have the E3 Chalet. Happy right. to have everyone come in before and after the show. And then for our E3 members, they can enjoy the, the show and, and air conditioning. So Great. love to see them there. Great. Hey, your enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rain. Uh, well, that's, that's it up for this show. My name is Tweet Coleman with the Florida Aviation Network. Thanks for being with us and uh, hope to see you on the field here one of these days in, uh, at, at Sun and Fun 23. Thank you.